Well, Olivia and Michael, so nice to virtually meet you. I wanted to congratulate you because this season two has been so long awaited for the fandom. Um, I wanted to say I've seen episode one. I cannot wait to see the next episodes, but I wanted to just say first and foremost, how was the premiere? Because it was nice to finally have an actual in-person premiere. So Olivia, I want to begin with you. How was the premiere over the weekend? Oh my gosh. It was just, I was listening to the Cool and the Gang song, Celebrate Good Times, all weekend. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, it's finally here. So it was, it was so fun. And it, I mean, honestly, a little bit surreal because it was such a long time coming. And, but I just feel like it's such an important thing to be able to like punctuate hard work with a premiere and a party and like people getting together and like watching the thing that you made. So it felt like such a nice little exclamation point on the journey that is fueled and being able to finally see some fans and be able to do, you know, the photos and sign things for that. Just like to be able to celebrate was just such a gift. I was, I was so excited. It yeah, just so excited to be out. Michael, how was the premiere for you? Did you echo those thoughts on what Olivia oh, said? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I didn't have the same weight, you know, I kind of jumped in midstream here, but we were supposed to start this right when the pandemic hit. So there was, there was definitely a weight, but yeah, I agree. It's always nice to have some sense of finality to it. And this team worked really hard. You know, everyone did worked really hard and, you know, films are always tough, but this film was just, these films were especially tough filming them back to back in yep. the thick of a pandemic. So, you know, everyone let loose and everyone had a, had a really good time and it was good to kind of catch up with everybody. Yeah, I do want to get into what it was like filming during the pandemic. But um, like you said, Michael, I know that you were cast so long ago and then the pandemic yeah. hit. I kind right. of want you guys to take me back to when you all first met, because Olivia, I know that you had read with several other actors. I don't even know how many, but take me back to when you and Michael first met, when it was, was it at a chemistry reading and that process? Yeah, take me back, Olivia. I'd like to know how many. Right? <laughs> I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Michael and I first met at a coffee shop, the 101 Cafe, which is now closed. It died the pandemic. Very sad. That's such a great spot. Super sad. But it was like, it's this classic Hollywood cafe. And we were sitting down and um, we got breakfast. I think you got French toast or something. I was like, I like him. Probably, yeah. Right? Yeah, I was yeah, like, I'm into this. Um, not to a good start, French toast. <laughs> right? French toast is a great way to start. Um, yeah, and and we just talked and got to know each other. It felt sort of like a first date, but also like an interview, but like a first date, you know? Um, and actually, I didn't really, I didn't meet with anyone else. Like, Passion Flix has sent me like a couple ideas of guys they were thinking about, but Michael was always the front runner. And they were basically like, we want Michael. We just want you to meet Michael to make sure that you want Michael. And then we all want Michael. <laughs> like, and so, yeah. And so I was so excited. Oh, Michael's just you. sitting here like listening. Like, about <laughs> interesting yes. yeah and so we got coffee and I just I immediately really really liked him and I thought one that he was great casting but also two that we would like really get along and I think it's really important when you're shooting something that's as like vulnerable as these movies um you really like the co the leads have to get along like in life like we need to like each other um, and I remember after the the coffee meeting with you, I was like, oh my God, yeah. Like, I think one, you were really like, you had the right attitude, I feel like. I was like, that was something that really struck me. I was like, oh, he wants to make a good movie. He understands that this is for the fans, that we have to stick to the book, that this is like, you know, um, filmmaking made by women for women. And I love that you were excited about that. We're like, yeah, let's do this. And I remember like at the end of the breakfast, you were like, so are we doing this? And I was like, yeah, I think we are. <laughs> That's so cool. So Michael, after the breakfast, was there like any type of formal like audition or chemistry process like on tape that you and Olivia and Tosca all did together? Or did you just do a table read? I'm trying to remember the sequence. Like... <laughs> What happened? Right? Like we went it's, to the coffee shop after. It like a, because it was a lot. You guys were about to film, and then the pandemic happened, right. and then you had to pause, and then you just filmed late last year. Right, but like yeah. the table read, believe me, the table read that we did was after one on one, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, the, the casting process for me was, I mean, usually th this was essentially uh, a direct offer. So like it was, but it wasn't. Um, my team, like I, initially it was, I, I've talked about this the other day, like I usually start with a no, because <laughs> like it's demanding. I know what it's going to be. And it's like, you have to really, really be on board for something. You're giving a part, it, it costs a lot. Yeah. You know, if you're going to do it right. And so uh, I was a little skeptical at first, but I'm like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll go and meet with them. And then after meeting with Tosca and Olivia, um, I'm like, all right, yeah, I really got on board once I kind of understood why Tosca makes these films. And once I kind of saw, I could, you know, feel the energy, feel the vibe in the room, I could look Olivia in the eye. I'm like, yeah, I can definitely do this with her because it does make a difference. There, there are actors and actresses. It doesn't necessarily mean that someone is difficult, but if there isn't a kind of a vibe or a connection, yeah. could you make the movie? Yeah, but it might be really hard and it may not end up very good, yeah. you know? And for something like this, obviously with the intimate scenes and just, there's so much like texture to these roles to make it work. Mm -hmm. And if you're really gonna make the story breathe and really take the words off the, out of the book and out of the page, you've gotta have that connection. You've gotta have that, that kind of, uh, I mean, the word chemistry gets tossed around a lot. And honestly, I don't really like the word chemistry because I think no one knows what the hell it means. Yeah, but the whole, it means a lot to different actors. Like it means a right. different meaning, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's real, it's real. There is something, call it chemistry, that I, I had to, you know, we had to feel for ourselves. But yeah, that was that was yeah. kind of how it went down. Um, but yeah, once I we went to this table, it was supposed to be, that probably would have been the audition if there was an audition. <laughs> But like yeah. it was like the audition was seasons. the coffee meeting, <laughs> right? Yeah, but, that's that's true. <laughs> I don't just launch right into it, right? Like it was like a play. Like I just yeah. started basically giving See. ideas, and we just kept going. And I think we all cleared our afternoon, and it was like five hours later. And I remember walking out like Jesus, I'm starving. We've been here for six. Hours. <laughs> oh my god, that's so <laughs> funny. Like, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. No, thank you for for speaking on that. So, what was it like? when Passion Flicks finally released the teaser announcing who the new Colton Donovan was and seeing all the fandom praise. I think I watched the teaser like 15 times that day and my friends yeah. were texting me. I was like, oh my God, look, how, what was the, what was just like the fandom, you know, seeing the fandom reaction like that, Michael, and how supportive everyone was. Well, at, see, at that point we were what, like a week away from blasting off on day one. So I was so up to my gills and and getting ready because we had a lot of we had a lot of pages to cover. Yeah, a lot of prep. there's a lot. Like I was really. I mean, Colton Donovan is obviously a very complicated character. Um, so if I was not so busy, I probably would have paid a lot more attention to it. But the one thing I did take away was it was really lovely to have all the support, and it was very inspiring. Yeah. And uh, when I embarked on this. I kind of said to myself, you know, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do this right, my North stars can give the fans what they want. I want to give them Colton Donovan as he's written. I don't want to come with my idea. Obviously, it's going to be me. It's going to be my interpretation. But I don't want to come here like, no, this is who I think this guy is. Colton Donovan is who Christy wrote, who Colton yeah. Donovan is. And that's what my job was. And so when I saw that teaser and I saw how excited people were for that, it gave me more conviction. And yeah that's the right idea. That's how I'm going to approach this thing. Yeah, no, I love that you're really just truly basing the character off Christie's words because I'm a huge fan of the books. And yes, like it's a super complicated carrier with a very, very dark past. And I can't wait to see how you guys explore that in the next um, in the next couple of episodes. Um, well, I wanted to get into kind of like what it was like, you know, filming during COVID. Did you have to jump around? Did you were you not able to kind of film in order? Olivia, how was that? And how long was it four weeks for Fueled and then four weeks? weeks for season three how long did you guys that film sound, that would have been great four weeks each would have been great <laughs> would have been great no so we had what was it six weeks or seven it was three and three yeah it was like three it weeks was basically each. three and three but we had thanksgiving in the middle so there was one little like half week in there or something i think we had 34 shooting days wow to do both movies <laughs> and we block shot them which means we were shooting both films simultaneously. So 
every single day we would shoot scenes both from fueled and crashed. Oh my gosh. How do you keep up and organize? Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I'm like a little bit of a, a like continuity ninja. Like I'm like very aggressive about making sure I understand my timeline as a character. And so I made this binder where I, I put both of the scripts in one binder because I was like, I just have to think of this as one big script. I have to stop dividing it into fueled and crashed. Otherwise I'm going to lose my mind. So I'm like, this is just one big continuous story. And then every week I would look at the preliminary schedule and I'd like sticky note all of the scenes that we were doing. And I went through the whole script. And at the beginning of each scene, I wrote what chapter it was in the books. And I would read that chapter over and over and over again before filming. And like at each scene heading, I'd write, this just happened, this happens next. Like to try and give myself context because there's so many things happening and there's so many twists and turns and you really have to make sure you arc these characters out. Um, so it was a lot of like mental gymnastics trying to remember and keep straight all of these nuances, but we really went for it, girl. We really went for it. <laughs> no, you, you, I just, just hearing you talk about your preparation and how to do Riley and Colton, you guys are literally both like the fans, like world's greatest, you know, Riley and Colton out there, honestly, truly. I can't wait to finish the rest of season two. Um, is there, a? I mean, you know, of course, you know, I've read the book, so I know what happens, but is there a particular sequence that you are excited for fans to see? Maybe something that can surprise them um, you know, over this particular season for Riley and Colton. Michael, I want to begin with you. What's something that you think that the fans will be surprised or excited about to see in particular? I mean, we go for it. Yeah. You know, like, we do. I think yeah. from day one, I remember seeing the look in Tosca's eye after like one of the early scenes, because I don't think she really thought I was going to come as hard as I did. I'm... So I'm, like, oh, we're, oh, we're good. Yeah, we're gonna make that movie. I'm like, yeah, we're making that movie. <laughs> Honestly, impressing Tosca is like the best thing ever. You're done. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, right? Tosca is great. But yeah, I think, yes, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's any sequences that really jump out to me. To, to be honest with you, because we block shot this thing, it was 240 pages. I really have a hard time. It's it, there's also, well, I'll, I'll preface it with this when you do a character that can be as kind of emotionally demanding or just as like uh dr not draining isn't the word but just a very challenging character they're gonna be a postpartum so it's actually like sometimes it's hard to let go of it so i kind of purposely try to forget the shit that we did to make the movie <laughs> so that's what sometimes is what makes the interviews challenging because i'm trying to think like oh god what did we do and even when the premiere came up, I'm like, I got, I went back to my old notes to kind of like got to get it back in my body so I can kind of remember all the things that we went through. Yeah. Um, but I know I, I'm really excited. I'm as, as excited for Crash as I am for Fueled. Yeah. So I think because we started with, we basically shot backwards in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, it's crazy. But we started with Crash and Colton's <laughs> arcing more in Crash, obviously. Yeah. So, you know, my, when I had to kind of look at the arc of Colton, I mean, I had to really figure out where I was on this emotional and this healing journey to make sure that I didn't get ahead of myself. So I'm really excited for some of this. Obviously, the scene was Olivia, but I really love a lot of the pieces with uh, with Shaughnessy as well, with my dad. Yeah. I think there's a lot of really beautiful scenes there. But like, there's so many great, there's so much great support in this film, so many great supporting characters. And even in the premiere, whenever a supporting face came on screen, like everyone loved it, everyone got oh, yeah. excited. So. And they're really, a huge, yeah, a huge part of the book and the, yeah, the series too. Oh, well, like you said, I mean, obviously Colton and Riley have these massively emotional scenes. I mean, obviously Olivia, you know, even in season one, I just wanted to like hug Riley all the time. I wanted to hug her here. Is there something that you do to kind of wind down after these scenes where the two characters are having a really intense moment or are you guys able to just kind of laugh it off? Because I've spoken with actors where they're like, yeah, I filmed that scene a year ago and it still kind of sticks with me. Or or are you able to kind of just kind of, you know, kind of chill when the, when Tosca yells cut? Olivia, I want to begin with you. Yeah. So I think this project in particular trained me to be an actor who can switch it on and switch it off. 
Like I really had to learn how to compartmentalize because, you know, I mean, no, I don't want to give any spoilers, but the emotional roller coaster that Riley goes through and the sort of physical and emotional distress that she experiences throughout these things and just the peaks as well, like the peaks and the valleys. I was like, I have to be able to switch this off as soon as cut happens or else I'm going to lose my mind. Yes. So, um, so no, this this job in particular got me to a place where I could be in the middle of a scene, I'm fully present, she yells cut, and I'm like, whew, okay, what's next? <laughs> like, really helpful. And I don't know if that's healthy for me in my life life, but it's very helpful as an actor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you don't want to necessarily bring Riley home with you, Michael. Is that the same for you or? <laughs> yeah, well, the reality is we didn't have a choice. Like we, 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 had, a, we had a job to do. Right. You know, like we we finish a really demanding scene and it's like, great, well, we have another demanding scene coming up right after this. So like we had to buck up and that was like, we yeah. knew what we signed up for. Yeah. And so really think, in a way oh, we kind of had to find that stamina. You yeah. Know? We had 100%. To out how to do that. I think we were, I love what you said about it. We were sort of required to, like, I feel like I had an adrenaline push that lasted for seven weeks and then I <laughs> left all of January. That's what I think happened. Like, that, yeah. I'm sure you yeah, both I did. Thing. I had an ongoing joke that like I, we were, I was going to wake up because we wrapped like right before Christmas Eve or something like yeah. that. Wow. I was just going to wake up and cold sweat. Like, what just happened? Where have I been <laughs> for the last six weeks? What is this place? Because we, like, there's some days where we literally like, I'm just like, who am I? Where are we? How did we get here? I'm in a race car, I'm screaming, I'm crying, uh, we're in a shower, right? you know? Like, <laughs> You're like, what did I even just do? Did you do any particular like race training, like driver training for Colton or did you have, or did you just kind of like have anything from like previous experience that you used? If it, I mean, if it would have been required, I could have done it, but like I, I've done some racing in other films. Yeah. This, it's just, it's not really, it's not really a race film. You know what I mean? So there wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot. I mean, you're driving in that teaser. It looked awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've seen so far. Anyway, I haven't seen the other three yet. Right. <laughs> right. No, so there wasn't too much training, but um, I, I don't know for anyone who's never been in those those cars. Man, that's a tight fit. Oh my First God. time I got in that, I was saying like to come out of the pandemic, like you know we're kind of left alone, kind of keeping to myself, not even really talking to people. To boom, we shoot a teaser. I'm on set with a bunch of personalities. I'm getting smashed into this tiny car with a helmet on top of me and they put a camera on me and just like, oh God, I, the, the pandemic was really nice. What did I just get myself to do? It, it was jarring to do like get back into work with people around after the pandemic. I'm, I'm, I think it was jarring for everyone, no matter what the profession was. Yeah, and you have to have a set, there's a set stamina because it's, you just have to, you have to have a lot of energy to make a film generally. But if you're a lead, I mean, you gotta have, you have to have uh, a reserve. Yeah. And so I don't know what Olivia's experience was, but um, I really, really tried to get myself into game shape because I knew it was going to be a, a very, a, a, an eye opening. Oh, that's right. We haven't done anything for eight, nine months. Oh, yeah. you know? um, boom, we got to go shoot this thing. We've got to cover a lot of pages in six weeks. 100%. Well, I know you guys said that you had to film obviously crashed and fueled simultaneously a lot of the times backwards, but uh, the scenes between in episode one between Riley and Colton are so beautiful. You guys, honestly, I know you don't necessarily like the world, really do truly have great on screen chemistry. Um, I'm honestly just curious do you have to, do you save those scenes for later in the shoot, or do you have to do some of the more intimate scenes throughout? production as well. How do you all and Tosca do it? Olivia, I want to begin with you. Yeah, so Tosca's great. She really tries to um, give us at least like a week's worth of filming before we start doing any sort of intimate scenes, just so everybody's a little bit in a groove and we know each other better and we're more used to each other. But our first intimate scene we had to shoot was on the Friday of the first week. And it was a limo scene, limo. Um, the limo scene rather. Yes. Um, and yeah, and I remember we both were like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is, yes, right. We have, yes, this is what we're doing, right? And um, and so you do sort of like ramp 
into it. And I think Tosca is really great about creating an environment and a space where we feel comfortable and we can sort of like ease into those things. She takes it very seriously. And we had an intimacy coordinator and we all did. of that. So, um, yeah, so there was like, there were a lot of systems in place to help us feel comfortable, but it is just like, it's like a weird thing to have to do, especially in a pandemic, you know, like where you've gone from like staying far away to, from people to like your job being to be very close with this person. <laughs> You know, I think, but I don't know if it was true for you, Michael, but I had a little bit of a, like a hump to get over with that, where I was like, oh yeah, this is right. This, yeah, right. People. Yeah, it's because everything is in our <laughs> brain. Yeah, I mean, we forget what it was like, because again, this was like the rage of the pandemic. Like this. Right, nobody crazy. had been vaccinated yet when you guys were filming. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And so everything in our brain is like, kind of like stay away from each other. Like, <laughs> and, that, right. and it also makes a set sets are very there's a lot of camaraderie that goes on and it's challenging for a crew because even the crew can't really they're trying to they're trying to keep their distance and in a lot of ways right. like me and olivia were like a bubble boy and a bubble girl and then like yes. we turn on the camera and we're like nom, 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 nom. <laughs> so yeah but i will like, say i will say that it really like you can really tell the difference between like the beginning of the shoot and the end of the shoot i feel like by the end of the shoot you and i were just like hey what's up like you right. know Right. You could have walked in on me changing and I would have been like, hey, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, when you look at all the things that we had to do, I guess that was probably enough. You got very comfortable. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it is crazy filming something for passion flicks that's so intimate like this during the pandemic. So thank you for, for speaking on that. Um, I love the, the Vegas sequence in episode one. That's Colton's little getaway that he has to do. And it made me think, you know, now that, you know, the pandemic is kind of, you know, we're kind of getting out doing more things now. What are some of your guys' favorite places to get off and jet out? So for me, it's probably Ocean City, Maryland. I personally like going to like the Bahamas, Nassau, something like that. Olivia, what about you? Um, so my boyfriend and I, Angel, we love Wyoming. We like love it so much, but we're sort of like wilderness people. Like, oh, okay, weirdly, that's cool weirdly, though. Yeah, I'm weirdly like backwoods. You would never yeah. guess, but I love camping. So we love Wyoming, but I also love Texas and I've finally been able to go back to Texas and see some family and friends. So spending some good time in Austin, but also just like getting off the grid and like camping somewhere in the mountains by a river is like my dream oh that sounds so good i've never been to wyoming but i'm going to colorado for the first time this year so Ooh, enjoy girl it's all, it's all so beautiful over there oh i'm so it. excited yes michael what about for you where are you, some of the places that you like to go off and just forget about the world <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm always when when i jet it's it's kind of wherever like the i'm being called you know wherever the globe's calling i'm it's all fair game desert but it's nature it's essentially nature desert vineyards you know, the jungle, I've gone, I've traveled quite a bit in Southeast Asia, I've traveled quite a bit in, in Europe and in, South, in Central America, but obviously I, right now, I don't think I'm going to be taking those big treks still, because I have some buddies that do have been doing it still a bit challenging. So I would stick, you know, I'm also an ocean guy, so I'm over on the East Coast right now, so I'd probably stick to, stick to some island hopping. Yeah, um, yeah, 100, yeah, no, 100%. Really yeah, 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 no, I, I, I still haven't been to Wyoming. That's on my list. I got a, I got a brother. One of my brothers is in Colorado. So I'm probably going to go visit him at some point, maybe hop up there. Ooh, fun. Yeah. No, well, to, uh, no, Olivia, what'd you say? Did everybody come to Wyoming? It's just oh, no. yeah. have a party in Wyoming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I can't, I, yeah, no, I'm so excited. Um, well, to wrap, you know, I had so many different fan questions for you both. One of the ones that I got, you know, uh, the most, I think, was just now that, you know, of course, Olivia, you've played Riley for a long time now. You know, Michael, you've played Colton. You know, I guess we're going to have eight hours of, of Colton Donovan at the end of this. So now that you've done this project filmed over seven, eight weeks, you're going to see the fan reactions. You know, what is something that, you know, Colton, Colton and Riley have taught you about yourselves or what's something that you feel that you can relate to them on? Um, Michael, I want to begin with you. What's something that just playing this man, you know, taught you about yourself as a, as a person? Well, I, well there's... A there's so many ways to answer that. But the first thing that came to mind was the thing about Colton is 
even when, because there's times when you when you read the book, anyone who's a fan of the book would probably look at it and be like, "Wow, Colton's can be can really be a dick." Oh yeah, you know, like super mean. Is, <laughs> no, matter, no matter what you're going through, my read on Colton is, you know, he always had a good heart, and that's why he never went dark. That's why he didn't become like, yeah, he was a bad boy, but he never became a bad dude. You yeah. know, like he always wanted to do the right thing. He just was fighting to do that. He was struggling to do the right thing and then it took a woman like Riley to come along mm -hmm. and really that was so impactful and so jarring for him to be like no that's it I'm up against a wall I'm either gonna go through this darkness uh or I have to I have to I don't have a choice anymore um and I thought that was very compelling for him and it just kind of reminded me that you know um just you know, is no matter what it might be going on, what the challenges are, and everyone's got some challenges. Everyone's got it's something that they're going through at any given time. Like, there's always something to kind of be a shining light and, and kind of like just had to keep heading in this direction. And yeah. for him, it was like, for Colton, it was Riley. Riley was his way out. Like, Riley was his North Star. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, you know, it reminds me that no matter what's going on, like, especially now at this time in the world, like, there's never a good excuse to not be kind. That's my big thing. Like we can always be kind to each other. Yeah. And so I look at a guy like Colton, I'm like, wow, this guy, the world really kicked the shit out of him. And look, he caught, caught a few breaks, but I mean, he had a rough go, but he kind of kept, he kept a good heart through. And I think that's what, why people love the character of Colton Donovan. He, he was, he was written very, Chris, such a great job writing him in a very dynamic way where he didn't just become this kind of like placid kind of moody dude like there was so much more going on to him no 100 <laughs> yeah no i no thank you so much that was so detailed i can tell that you really really like care about getting this right for the fans and it just literally makes me so excited to see the rest of the episodes i'm just going to text Allie until they're finished <laughs> <laughs> olivia but yeah i wanted to i wanted to finish with you what's you know something that riley's you know taught you about yourself as a person because i just love how like you are riley to me like she's just like as like just such a positive you know light um so i'm just wondering you know what's something that you learned about you know yourself as a person by playing her right well i think the wonderful and beautiful thing that i learned playing riley is the power of vulnerability because if you look at what riley has been through and what she goes through in these stories the fact that she is able to be a person who still sees the best in people and is soft and willing to love and put herself out there and be vulnerable. Um, after all of the injuries, she's like everything she went through with Max, everything that happens with her and Colton, all of the people in her lives, the boys that she takes care of, that she still remains a hopeful, loving, vulnerable person was really, really, um, incredible and profound to me, especially after the year that we all had of 2020, you know, like there was a lot of injustice that was very public that year. There was a lot of like, you know, death and all of the, you know, just really hard stuff. And to be able to play a character who every day woke up and decided to be vulnerable anyway, I was like, that is an incredibly powerful thing. And it's what the world needs. It's like what you were saying, Michael, that like, be we must be kind to each other and i just think that riley is such an incredible example of that and i was so honored to be able to play um a, a, a woman like riley yeah no no thank you both so much for answering all of my questions like i said i enjoyed episode one so much and i'm a huge fan of christy's book so i cannot wait to see how the two of you finish out Riley and Colton's story. And I think the fans are gonna be so excited. I can't wait for them to see episode one in like two days here, finally. Yeah, I can't like, wait either. I wanna see them all too. I'm I like, know, I'm like, you probably haven't even, <laughs> wait, yeah, cause like, mate, have you, have you actually, yeah, last question, have you, have you not finished uh, seeing all the episodes yet? I've just seen one and two. Just see one and two. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. This was the first premiere I ever went to where I didn't, I had not seen it yet. I, I mean, oh, when we sat cool. down there, I had not seen anything. 
Oh, so cool. Yeah, I have, I've talked to a lot of actors where the first time they see it is at the premiere prior to like, you know, in a screening room. Um, but that's kind of cool that you saw it at the premiere. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it, it can be yeah. a, it can hit your stomach turn a little bit, but like, I know, it's like, cool. oh my God, is it going to be good? I hope it's good. You're like, I know, you're like, I don't want to see myself. <laughs> Thank you both so much, Olivia and Michael. I appreciate your time so much. And like I said, I can't wait for fans to see this. And you guys are the perfect Riley and Colton. Thank you both so much for your time today. Thank, Thank you, Lauren. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.